The plugin is a piece of code developed to execute a specific task that WordPress doesn't support out of the box. It's like the effect pedals and processor for your electric guitar. You can buy the most expensive guitar, but without the right sound effect, you can't rock. It's like the turbo on a great engine, like the accessories for your kitchen mixers or the apps on your phone. You get the idea. A plugin can extend the functionality of your WordPress website. You can add contact forms, create e-shops, add page builders, exit pop-ups, and many, many more. Basically, whatever you think of adding on your WordPress website, there is a good chance that you will find a plugin for it. Hi, my name is Adrian and I'm a web developer. I create informative videos and tutorials about WordPress. So if you want to learn more about this amazing platform, be sure to subscribe. In this video, I will talk about types of plugins, where to find plugins and best practices when using plugins. So let's start. There are four types of plugins, free plugins, premium plugins, paid plugins and custom plugins. The free plugins are the ones you download and install on your WordPress website for free and they don't have a paid version. If you log in into your WordPress admin and go under plugins and click add new, you will see the free and freemium plugins. The freemium plugins are the ones that you can download for free from the WordPress repository, but they have a paid version too. This types of plugins will let you use some of its features for free, but if you want the full features, you have to pay for it. I hate those types of plugins and I avoid them as much as possible. I don't like that they are keep pushing and pushing you to upgrade to their premium version and most of the times the free version will be like a slap in the face. All the good stuff comes with the premium version and the free version is useless and you probably can find a free plugin that will be better than those freemium ones. That's not the case for all. There are good freemium plugins too. The paid plugins are the plugins that you pay for. You will not find those types of plugins in the WordPress repository. You can find them on ThemeForest, TemplateMonster, PremiumPlugins.com and many other places. Just do a Google search about a WordPress plugin that does something that you want and you will probably find a premium plugin. There is something that I don't like about those plugins too recurring subscription model. Few years ago, you will buy it once and you can use it as long as you would like and get support for about a year or so. You could extend the support period by paying extra, but that was it. Now a lot of paid plugins are subscriptions. I get why a lot of developers are doing this more stable income, but I don't think the value for the money is there. Just saying. If you don't find a plugin that will meet your needs, you have a fourth option, custom plugins. Those can be developed by a web developer to your specifications. Depending on what you want your plugin to do, this developer should know how to code at least PHP. WordPress is really flexible and you can build a lot of types of websites and platforms. The most weird thing I've developed on WordPress was an API endpoint for a news outlet. The editors didn't like the WordPress editor and they used GitHub to manage their content. All the content was written and edited in GitHub and whenever it was updated on GitHub, the API I developed was updating the content in WordPress. Whenever you want to add a plugin to your WordPress website, use my PPC method practicality, performance, and compatibility. Because WordPress is used by a lot of websites, there is a large community around it. A lot of developers are building WordPress plugins. Some of them are good and some of them are not. There is no such thing as a perfect plugin and you will find out that they will not cover 100% of what you want. So whenever you are looking to add a plugin to your website, Look for the one that covers most of your requirements. If you find the perfect one, kudos to you. With most of the plugins, you will encounter a decrease in your website's performance. It can be on the front end or it can be on the back end. To explain this better, 
Imagine that you are at a restaurant that has only one waiter for all the tables. The more customers that restaurant has, the more time it will take for the waiter to get to your order and serve your food. In our case, the waiter is the server and the customers are the plugins. The more they are, the more time it will take for the server to load your page. And the bigger the plugin, the bigger the impact on your website's performance. With compatibility, there are two things that you have to take in consideration. WordPress compatibility and compatibility between the plugin you want to install and the other themes and plugins. Wait, there are three things you have to look for. If the plugin is compatible with the version of WordPress you are using, if the plugin is compatible with your theme, and if the plugin is compatible with the plugins you already have installed on your website. So, three. To check if a plugin is compatible with the version of WordPress you are using, go to your WordPress dashboard, click on plugins, add new, and you will see in the plugins cart the compatibility status. There is no easy way to tell if your plugin will have conflicts with your theme or plugins. You have to install it first and see after. One way that I know you can check for compatibility issues is with Manage WP. This is a backup service that can also verify the compatibility of your plugins and updates before you install them. If you know any other way, leave it in the comment section down below. If a plugin has compatibility issues, you will see it. You will get an error on your screen or you will have some weird text saying that you have a problem or your website will be a blank page. It's a good practice to back up your website before you add a new plugin or run updates. There is one more thing you should keep in mind when working with plugins. D N R. Do not repeat. You should never have more than one plugin that does the same thing. Going back to my restaurant illustration, the more plugins you have, the slower your website will be and you can run into compatibility issues because both of the plugins will try to do the same thing. WordPress will get confused and will give you a big fat error. So if you are not satisfied with a plugin, deactivate it first and after that you can install a different one. Before I close, I want to touch on one more topic where you shouldn't download plugins from. You should never ever download plugins from torrents or other peer-to-peer -peer download platforms. We all are suckers for free stuff, but resist the urge of downloading paid plugins from torrents. It is illegal and you will end up with malware, spyware or adware on your website and you probably will not want that. Buy the plugin. This way you can support the developer and also you will stay away from problems. If you are getting free plugins, always download them from the WordPress repository, not from random sources. I know that you can find plugins elsewhere, but unless you are a developer, you should never download them outside of WordPress. The plugins that are on WordPress repository are verified and up to date. Most likely a plugin from outside sources will not be up to date and you can end up with conflicts or with a broken website. Now you know more about WordPress plugins and you can tackle this challenge with more confidence. If you reach this far into this video, it means that you really like it. So hit the like button.